Chelsea Judge. I'm co-founder and scientific advisor with the Connor B. Judge Foundation, which is named in honor of my brother, Connor, who endures NMO. I was introduced into the NMO world um, when, ironically, I was just in the midst of my PhD in immunology. Connor presented pretty typically, the medical community would say now, looking back, um, he started to have visual disturbances first, followed by back and leg pain that ultimately resulted in transverse myelitis. Connor was 22 back in 2014, um, like really healthy, active. He was actually a landscaper. And when he started to complain about this eye pain and visual issues, um, I think most people wrote him off, including my family. Uh, the, he went to a doctor, was told it was general inflammation. Uh, it started to get worse. He went to another doctor, nothing. And uh, the optic nerve of course, got worse. His um, symptoms seemed to spread. Um, he didn't realize it was a spinal cord issue, but he had back pain, leg pain, and then ultimately, uh, I get a call from him, I hadn't seen him in a couple of weeks, and he's explaining to me what his symptoms are. Uh, his eye pain is so bad, his vision is so bad, he can barely see. The back and leg pain is so severe that he can hardly walk, and he confided in me that he was also experiencing bladder and bowel issues. Um, I'm not a clinician, but obviously those were severe symptoms and sounded neurological, and I told him, that next day, so he called me at night, that early in the morning, we'd go to the ER, we'd, we'd figure this out, we wouldn't stop. Looking back, my family and I have a lot of guilt for, I think, not attentively listening to his symptoms because what if we were able to advocate for him to push for something, for a diagnosis sooner so that he didn't have to experience what he ended up experiencing? but you can't, someone told me you can't shit on yourself. And I realized that um, I didn't have the knowledge then that I do now, um, but now I've learned you, we, the family members, the caregivers, so to speak, need to be attentive, need to listen to our patients and to advocate for them if they are not being heard. That night, before I thought I was gonna go to the ER with Connor, uh, I was, again, in the midst of my immunology PhD, I don't have any neurology experience. Uh, the only thing I was familiar with was multiple sclerosis and another neurological autoimmune disease. And I remember not being able to sleep, taking a shower and thinking if this is MS, then that's an autoimmune disease. And I can do that. I could study that. I could do, I could help in some way with that if I understand the immune system. And I made a mental commitment to myself to make that my life <laughs> in some way. Um, the next day, I did not make it to the ER with Connor because Connor woke up still blind. And this time now, um, now we realize it's transverse myelitis, but he woke up not able to move or feel uh, from the waist below. So he quite literally fell out of bed and then using his upper body crawled to his car and his girlfriend at the time drove him to the yard. My mom met him there. And that became my uh, dual role now in the family. It's not just sister, but as like resident scientist because no one else in my family had medical or scientific backgrounds. And when you're in the healthcare system, you're navigating it it's already an abyss but if you don't speak that language that medical scientific jargon how are you supposed to be able to translate it you need a translator and that's what I became because of my immunology background um, I relayed the scientific and medical jargon that the doctors were saying so that my family and obviously Connor could stay informed um, I became as I think most family members are when they see someone they love go through something traumatic feeling really helpless and frustrated but I believe that knowledge is power and I became obsessed with the NMO literature I used my scientific background I learned everything 
I felt that I could about the immunological mechanisms of NMO, the standard of care, um, emerging therapies, clinical trials, nerve repair, nerve protection, everything that I could so that I could ask questions to the treating physicians for Connor to better um, give us, the family and Connor, uh, an understanding or estimate of his prognosis and potential therapies. So after months, a couple of months being in a couple of hospitals and learning how to walk again through extensive rehab, Connor finally was seeing his neurologist, who's fabulous. And I was ready for that meeting. I was there, again, to continue my scientist translator role. Um, and I knew there was a couple of potential uh, clinical trials that were emerging, and his neurologist presented him with one, which I was really excited about because the standard of care, this is back in 2014 at the time, um, were using general immune suppressants that had been used previously, in, for example, in transplant to shut down the immune system. And they had never been formally studied in NMO pace, patients, and so there was, of course, a lack of that in the current standard of care. And this um, clinical trial that his neurologist proposed was to deplete B cells. No one in my family knew what B cells were, but I did. And I told Connor and my family that it's thought that B cells are potentially really pathogenic in NMO. They can make uh, these autoreactive damaging antibodies that target the nervous system and destroy it. Um, they can activate their fellow immune cell friends, including T cells, to perpetuate or continue on that damage. They make a lot of inflammatory mediators that just really cause havoc. So there was strong rationale to deplete B cells. But there's a clinical trial and that sounds scary. So I worked through what a clinical trial was, how um, science and research is pushed, how we discover treatments that potentially Connor could be a part of that, that it is necessary to advance science and advance medicine, um, what the clinical trial phases are, uh, the general um, risk benefit ratio or profile of this potential therapy, what we knew about it and potentially other disease states, putting this all into context, again, so that Connor, my family, for him, could make the most informed, shared decision with his healthcare provider. Connor ultimately decided to go on the clinical trial therapy. And looking back, I don't know if he would have been on that clinical trial or not. Uh, maybe he would have, but I do think that for my family, having a translator um, was extremely helpful to at least decrease their anxieties, make them feel informed and empowered, um, and to better understand what Connor's prognosis and treatment outcome um, potentially would look like or would be, and it helped give them confidence in their decision. So, although Connor's able to, you know, walk and see now, there's obviously permanent neurological damage um, that you just can't see, right? Um, I think my experience as a science scientist and advocate and sister is all merged now, uh, but the chief one being advocacy and awareness, especially for these invisible symptoms. People have compassion because they can tell that you're paralyzed and they can infer that you're blind, but the other symptoms of NMO and other um, severe autoimmune diseases, including multiple sclerosis, are invisible. This includes anxiety and depression, which is heightened in NMO and MS, um, and experienced by those patients at least. Um, pain, spasticity, bladder bowel issues, all invisible. And I think this is what we as advocates need to be super loud about and raise awareness of. And as a scientist, I do that with facts, with data, and making sure that people are aware, um, based off of current studies, what patients are going through, and that, and that it's real. <laughs> and ultimately, NMO sucks, but there, I've heard someone call uh, 2019 the year of NMO, and for great reason. Um, there are a lot of really exciting, potentially emerging therapies that might even get FDA approval. And as of June 11th, 2019, today, there are no FDA approved therapies for NMO, but there's great potential that's going to change very quickly, and that is incredible. And a lot of this excitement for the year of NMO comes from the patient advocacy organizations like the Sumire Foundation, like Guthy Jackson, and like our little Connor B. Judge Foundation, because we make sure 
to be loud about NMO, what patients are going through by raising awareness and contributing um, to ongoing research and increasing research funds for NMO. And I think that that gives me hope that there is such a strong community for NMO patients so that we can bring this disease um, to into the light and I think has allowed for this really uh, positive um, year.